All right, so let's start from the beginning. So you just, you know, learn that at some point in the protocol, you're gonna try to prove that, oh, uh, let me write this, that uh, sum f is equal to some vanishing polynomial times some quotient polynomial, and you're going to do this by evaluating all these polynomials at some random point. That's what you just learned in the previous video. But, you know, or let, let's start from the beginning and at some point you'll see that it makes sense and we're going to use that trick and I'll re-explain it and all of that. But if we start from the very beginning and we look at, you know, our Sudoku problem, for example, that we're trying to, to prove that, you know, we know a solution and uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you might be, we might want to start with a very nice protocol where the prover sends to the verifier um, the, the solution you know, directly, <laughs> uh, of the Sudoku. And of course, both of them know, uh, know, know the, the let's call that public input of the, the problem, which is the Sudoku problem. And both of them know the program, which is a program that verifies the solution. So really the verifier just has to take the, the solution and input it into this, uh, you know, this program P with, with the, Sudoku problem and see if it outputs uh, true, right? Uh, yes, this solution works. But that's not great because you have to send a solution which might be big and also what we care about the most in cryptography is really hiding the solution. Like We, we care about zero knowledgeness. So, so I'm not going to get to the zero knowledgeness right away. But step by step, I'm going to mathematize this protocol first, and then we'll get there. So by mathema, I don't know what's a good word for that, but transform into mathematics, you know. Uh, if you look at this program here, it's just a bunch of, I don't know, it's a Python program or something like that. That's not really something you can prove because it's not math. So we are going to have to make this thing math first before we can even do cryptography on it. So I'm going to introduce the idea or the concept of arithmetic circuits, arithmetic circuits. And basically these circuits are exactly like the kind of, you know, hardware circuits that you can find with N gates and XOR gates and OR gates. And uh, you, I, I don't know, you don't have to know that, but a lot of circuits in hardware are designed like that um, using, actually, I don't know much about that. So I don't, I'm not going to use the real uh, uh, gates, but Maybe you have a, uh, oh, what am I doing? Maybe you have XOR gates between, um, let's actually, we'll use bits between one and zero, it gives you one, and maybe you, I don't know, end that with uh, another zero and that gives you zero. Um, maybe that zero came out of another gate, which was an OR gate um, between two zeros. And, and you have this kind of like circuit where somewhere you have some input, maybe maybe that these are the inputs and maybe some constants here and and things flow kind of flow through the circuit and you end up, you know, with like a final result. And this is how you can write your um, your stuff. So basically arithmetic circuits are the same, but using mathematical gates. So you'll have to believe me, but you can write any kind of circuits with, um, I mean, to some extent, I'm not going to get too much into the details there, but um, replacing your gates with plus and multiplication gates, you can pretty much write whatever you want. And remember, we're in a field, uh, in a field F, so we'll have things like, I don't know, seven plus five, uh, and here we'll have three times four, um, so three times four is 12, and uh, seven times five is uh, 35, and maybe we have 35 uh, plus 12 and, and stuff like that. And at the end of the day, we, what we really want to do is transform our program into something like that so that we can do cryptography on it. Does that make sense? I mean, obviously you can't answer, but I'm just going, going to assume that it makes sense. Um, and that's kind of the first step uh, of any ZK snark. It's really arithmetizing, I don't know, arithmetizing your, your program into something like that. Um, and then you can prove that. So, that. so that's the idea of arithmetic circuit. 
In the next video, I'm going to talk about how you transform an arithmetic circuit into a constraint system. So, so you'll see that that's kind of the, the next step um, into our final Planck protocol. But basically here, uh, we can kind of modify uh, the solution here and we can modify the program here. And basically here, we'll call that an arithmetic circuit. And here we're saying uh, what we'll call private, private inputs. And you can imagine that the private inputs are maybe seven and three, and this is maybe representing the solution of our Sudoku problem. And maybe these are the public inputs, which are um, the Sudoku problem itself. And at the end, you get a final solution, which is true or false. Maybe one is true and zero is false. Um, it's really up to you how you want to represent that. But basically, that's that's um, you know that's our new protocol, which which still sucks. It doesn't have zero knowledgeness, but at at least now it's it's math, and so we can maybe do something about it.